So guys, today we've got a fabulous case study for you with a patient who has hip pain. So as we go through this person's assessment, can you work out what's going on with their diagnosis? If you're ready to find out, let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome to today's case study. Let's dive into it. So we have a 58 year old lady who presents with a six month history of left sided hip pain, which is presenting on the lateral side of her proximal hip and thigh region. So it came on around six months ago. She denies that there was any injury or trauma that started it off, but she noticed that it was gradually getting worse when she started doing more walking around six months ago. She was trying to do a little bit more walking with her dog. She was trying to do a little bit more walking for herself to try and lose weight by doing a little bit more exercise. She is retired now. She previously worked as a nurse, but she does find that the kind of activities of daily living that are affected by her hip pain these days include walking, going up the stairs in particular, and gardening, particularly when she's trying to spend long periods of time on her feet in the garden. So those are her main aggravating factors. And unfortunately, she's finding that she's struggling to find any easing factors. One other really important aggravating factor to mention is that she does have pain when she's lying on her side at night. So she's getting pain in the bed at night. In terms of her general health, she has a history of breast cancer, which was diagnosed in 2015. But thankfully, that's been under control for many years and she hasn't had any recent concerns when she's seen oncology about her breast cancer. And she's not using any medication for the symptoms and for any other symptoms in her past medical history. So let's dive into her objective examination. So the patient walks in with no major limping or any concerns regarding her gait. But when you lie her down on the plinth and you palpate her hip, it's clearly much more tender to palpate around the greater trochanter on her left leg compared to her right. You clear the lumbar spine by going through active range of movement of the lumbar spine and you find that this is really comfortable for her, not aggravating her symptoms in any way into flexion, extension and side flexion to both sides. Then we have a look at her left hip. We find that this is comfortable and not generating any pain and she has full range of movement into flexion, abduction and lateral rotation of the left hip. However, as you can see on the screen, when you internally rotate her left hip, it causes pain. And the other key movement that seems to be aggravating her symptoms is hip adduction, when you adduct the hip to the maximum range. Interestingly to note, her right hip has full range of movement with no pain at all. Now you do a couple of special tests to see if this provides any more indication about her diagnosis. So you decide to do a single leg balance test. So standing on her right leg, she has good balance and she has no pain on that test. When you stand, when she stands on her left leg, she has good balance there as well. However, it clearly aggravates her symptoms once she's standing on that leg for 15 seconds. You also produce a fader resisted test or a resisted fader test. So this is, as you can see here on the screen, where we position the hip into flexion, adduction and external rotation. And we then ask the patient to produce isometric internal rotation. So we resist that movement and that seems to aggravate her symptoms as well. So that's your subjective and your objective examination. Now it's over to you. Take a second to think about what you think's going on. What's your diagnosis for this patient? So everyone, let's dive into the diagnosis. So following the subjective and objective examinations, our impression was that this patient presented with a gluteal tendinopathy, also referred to as greater trochanteric pain syndrome. This is a condition of tendinopathy to the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons, which insert into the greater trochanter of the femur. And we know that the times that these tendons are most commonly aggravated is in adduction positions, hip adduction, a deduction, because when we're in that position, the iliotibial band runs over the top of those tendons and can compress them and aggravate them, which leads to a tendinopathy. So the key things we wanted to bring you in this case study is the reasons why, because we want you guys to have the clues and tips that follow greater trochanteric pain syndrome or gluteal tendinopathy so that you can spot them in your patients. So 
Here's some of our clinical reasoning. Well, first of all, the patient's age, 58. Now, there's no surprise that one of the first conditions you might think that they have is osteoarthritis of the hip, particularly given her age. However, the fact that she had no pain around the groin, her pain was all laterally, and the fact that she had good range of movement with no pain in flexion is a relatively clear marker that she is less likely to have osteoarthritis of the hip. When patients have hip OA, we certainly expect hip flexion to be painful. And we can also think of aggravating factors that might include putting on shoes and socks because that requires flexing the hip into a position which can aggravate it because of the hip flexion. So instead, what are some of the signs that give us more of an indication of greater trochanteric pain syndrome or gluteal tendinopathy? Well, first of all, she has pain around the greater trochanter. And as you can see with the picture on the screen, palpating at the greater trochanter clearly aggravates her symptoms. The other tests that we did include the single leg stand test, as you can see here, which is a test in where the glute med and glute min tendons have to really work hard in order to stabilize the pelvis. So when we ask those tendons to work really hard and it aggravates the patient's symptoms, it might give us more of an indication that those tendons are unhappy and that there is a tendinopathy at hand. The other test that we did was the resisted Fader test, so flexion, adduction, and external rotation position, and then asking the patient to internally rotate from there. Why? Well, glute med and glute min are key internal rotators of the hip joint. So when we put those tendons in their max stretch position with flexion, adduction, and, in, and external rotation, and then ask the patient to internally rotate, no surprise that it compresses those tendons and aggravates their symptoms. We look back at her subjective assessment and we can see that there was this recent increase in load, which is so synonymous with tendinopathy. The fact that she was walking a little bit more in that six month period, which must have been too difficult for her hip. We commonly find that this can be the case for individuals who are around her kind of age, between 50 and 60, perhaps within females who are around the menopausal or perimenopausal or postmenopausal age, because of the fact that there are hormone changes during that time that will have differences to the tendons and can irritate those tendons a little bit more. You may find that because of the menopause, it might be that ladies are looking for reasons to exercise more, to feel better about themselves, Weight gain is a common side effect of the menopause and so sometimes they're looking to try and do exercise to lose weight and that's one of the common stories that we'll hear when patients present with gluteal tendinopathy. Now the other thing that's a clear aggravating factor is her pain lying on her side at night and the idea behind this is that lying on one side will place that hip into adduction, adduction, which again is that position which we know is going to aggravate those glute med and glute min tendons. So there you go. Those are the key reasons why we thought this patient had a gluteal tendinopathy. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this case study. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. We've got loads more brilliant resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our membership site, member.clinicalphysio.com, link in the description below. We have the Case Study Club, a brilliant resource in which we interview different clinicians and get their expert opinion on the cases they bring to the Case Study Club to improve your clinical reasoning too. So my name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon here on Clinical Physio.